Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to attempt to make a quad tree. Now, you might be asking yourself, and it's a perfectly appropriate question, what is a quad tree, what is a quad tree and why do I care? Well, let me talk about that over here. So, um, something that you might have noticed in many, many, many of my videos and various things that I've made is, ooh, look at this beautiful uh, marker. Wow, really made a nice rectangle there. That I create a lot of systems that have a lot of what you might call particles in them. Or little agents that flock around the screen or that bounce around or bump into each other, have magnetic forces. And one of the elements of doing that, one of the elements of these kinds of scenarios is that for every particle, for every dot, for every thing that's in my two-dimensional space, I have to check its location relative to all the other ones. So this one I need to check relative to all the other ones. This one I need to check relative to all the other ones. And that is a lot of checks. For example, if there are 10, if I have 10 particles and I want to know the distance between each particle and every other particle, I need to perform 10 times 10 checks, which is 100. Now, of course, there are like little optimizations there that I can reduce the number a little bit. But, but at its core, this is the idea. So this is what's known as an n squared algorithm because I have n elements and I need to do something n squared amount of times, which means if there were 100, then suddenly I need to do 10,000 checks. And if there were 1,000, I suddenly need to do 1, <laughs> one million checks. Um, if it was a pinky, maybe? I'm not so sure. So you'll notice that these are going up by a factor of 10, but these are going up by a factor of, well, not 10, 10 squared and more, right? <laughs> because this is 100 times this, and this is 1,000 times this, so it's, it's exponential. So this idea here that we, can we do better? Well, I have an idea for you, because I'm really thinking about this. <coughs> My idea is, well, okay, what if, I know, I know, I know, I know, I got this. <laughs> what if instead of like for this particular particle right here, instead of checking all the particles, why don't I just check the ones that are near it? Like within a slight range around where it is. Oh, okay, but how do I know which are the ones that are near it? Okay, let me check all the particles and see which ones are near it. But I'm, then I am checking all the particles again. Is there a way that I somehow could create these sort of regions of particles and then ask, give me just the particles within that range without having to then suddenly go through all the particles. And in fact, there is such a way. And that one way, there are many ways, is known as a quad tree. Now, the reason why it's called a quad tree is that the idea is to take a space and section it into four, four sections, quad. And each of those sections could potentially be sectioned into four. And those could be into four. And the reason why it's a tree is that the sections, I don't know, there might be about the cells, the tiles, um, actually include references to their subsections. And so it's like a tree. And there's going to be a recursive algorithm here. So we're going to start with this idea of a rectangle. And that rectangle will store a reference to four rectangles. And each of those four rectangles will store a reference to four rectangles. But here's the thing. They only are going to need to store, to store a reference to these children rectangles if there are a lot of particles in their area. Otherwise, they can just keep track of their particular particles. So the idea is that I can take all of these particles, register them inside of this quad tree, and then the quad tree is something I can query to say, hey, think about this, this part of the window, this part of the canvas. Just give me everything that's there. And it's going to reduce the number of checks um, by a lot. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I should go look this up. I think this is most likely turning this into n log n. So instead of n squared, and this is, has to do with something called big O notation, uh, which is the, a way of notating how expensive or how long an algorithm takes based on the number of elements that are part of that algorithm. So an n algorithm is wonderful because if there's only like draw, I just want to draw 10 things, that's an n algorithm. Check everything against everything else, that's n squared, and log n is going to reduce that number quite a bit. Let's go to the Wikipedia page for quad tree and see if I'm right about that. 
Okay, so this is the Wikipedia page for Quad Tree. It, this reminded me that I, that, there, there, that I didn't mention that there are also other kinds of trees, like an oct tree, which you might use for three dimensions. And you could just say k tree for any generic amount of subsectioning. But, um, but I'm going to really just implement the sort of standard quad tree, also known, I believe, as a point quad tree. And if you look here, it says operating in O log n time. So you might have th thought that I got this wrong because I said n log n. But I, I think I'm actually correct here because the idea here is that to look up a bunch of particles for one for a given area, that can happen in log n times. But in this where I want to check every particle against every other particle, I need to do the log n thing n times. So this, like, let's just say, let's just go for, let's look at the uh, 1,000. Inst instead of 1 million, this would be equals 1,000 times log of 1,000, which is just 3,000 checks. This is a massive improvement. A question has been asked in the chat. Wouldn't you have to restructure the quad tree every time an object moves? And in fact, the answer to that question is absolutely 100% yes. This quad tree is something that would, for collision detection that you have to build each frame of animation. And there is a lot of time that it takes to build the quad tree, but it's totally worth it. Because if I can get this 1 million number down to 3,000, and just think about it, if I had 10,000 elements, how much I'm going to be able to reduce it, it's worth building the quad tree. Okay, so what do we need to make this quad tree? I'm going to do make an example using P5, but I'm going to, um, and let me make another uh, JavaScript file. I'm going to call it quadtree.js. So this is where, so I, even though I'm going to use P5 for this example, I'm going to write the quad tree algorithm in JavaScript with no P5 dependencies. Um, that way it can be applied you know, to lots of different scenarios with other frameworks. Okay, so what do I need to um, build a quad tree? Well, I need a few um, kind of core elements here. For example, I want to have a point class. And a point class is just going to be something that stores an X and a Y together. And again, I'm going to be doing a quad tree in two dimensions. Um, I also want to have a rectangle class. And a rectangle class is going to be, eh, I could have a point. You know what? I'm going to do something a little goofy. I'm going to give it an x and a y and a width and a height. So I need these ideas. I need to be able to make, and, and I could use a p5 vector for the point class, um, but again, I, I want to build this without any p5 dependencies. So I need these data structures because the, what I'm gonna, the way I'm going to make this quad tree work is by feeding it points. I'm going to say insert points into the quad tree, and the quad tree is going to have, as part of itself, references to all of these rectangular areas. Okay, so now let's make a quad tree class. So what do I need to make a quad tree? Now here's the thing, think about this. A quad tree, oh boy, you might go back and look at my binary tree uh, video tutorial or some of my other videos that have to do with recursion because in, what you might think is, oh, I'm going to have an array and the array is going to store a list of all of these sections or tiles or rectangles, but I'm not. The quad tree is actually a reference just to the large uh, kind of parent, the sort of root level rectangle, that area, and it's going to have a reference to the four things, the four subsections, and those will have reference to the four subsections. So that's a tree. So actually, a quad tree only has, the only bit of data that I really need, and we'll call it a boundary. This dot boundary, and that boundary is going to be a rectangle. So for example, in sketch.js, I might say, let QT be a new quad tree. And I might say, let boundary E be a new rectangle. And you know what? I think it's going to make life easier if the rectangle is something that we think of as uh, centered, registered around its center point, and those width and height values are actually just the distance from the center to the edge. So not the full, uh, not the full length of each side, but the half length. So I'm going to say the boundary is at 200, 200, well, with a width of 200, 200. That's kind of awkward. 
but fine, because it's 400, 400, okay? So I'm gonna create this quad tree with a boundary, console.log QT. So this is like a beginning point, a starting point. So let's take a look. Uh, rectangle is not defined because I forgot to reference my new JavaScript file here in my HTML file. Quad tree as a boundary of a rectangle, it has these properties. So, so far no errors, we're moving along. Now what do I need to do next? The thing that I want to do with any quad tree is I want to say something like, let me make a little loop and I'm going to just do it one time and I'm going to say a point, I'm going to make a random point at a random area in the canvas and I want to say quad tree insert that point. The idea is that what I want to do is I want to take all the points that are within this space and these points might represent particles, any type of moving agent or entity, but right now I'm just going to build the static quad tree with static points. I want to insert them into the quad tree. So an important aspect of the quad tree is a, a, a property known as capacity. So how big is the quad tree? When do I choose that I need to subdivide? For example, if I start putting particles in this section here, oh, maybe once there's 10 particles in that section, it's gotten too big, I need to subdivide it. So we can, we could, uh, a typical thing might actually be to just have that actually be one. <laughs> as soon as there's more than one particle in that area, subdivide, but let's give it, let's pick the number four. It's kind of an arbitrary uh, capacity and it might make sense to, um, create a quad tree with a given capacity. So uh, when you create it, so I'm gonna say capacity equals N. So now in sketch, I'm gonna do quad tree boundary comma four. So this is a quad tree with uh, each section, each rectangle having a capacity of four. Okay, it was just pointed out to me that I did have a mistake here. Uh, this should be height, you know, it is a square. So width and height are equal, but if I want to set myself up for success in the future, let's try to correct that and put height there. Okay, so now I need to go here and I need to, what do I need to do? I need to write this insert function. Insert, and what do I want to insert? A point. And so what I need to do here, ah, so, oh, wait a second. I'm missing something super important. What is the quad tree, what is each tile need to have associated with it? Well, we know it needs its boundary, we now know it needs its capacity, but also needs to keep track of a bunch of points that are part of it. So what I can do here is say, as long as the length of the points array is less than uh, the capacity, then I can just say this dot points push, um, push what? The point. I've inserted the point. Now, what if the capacity is full? Well, if the capacity is full, then what I need to do is subdivide. So I'm gonna make this into a separate function. I think if you look at the Wikipedia page, um, the algorithm that's uh, outlined there kind of does the same thing. So I wanna make a function called subdivide and what that function does is it takes any rectangle object, remember that has an x, y, and a width, and a height, and subdivides it into four sections <laughs> over there. And so all I need to do is compute these four points and these four width and heights. And I'm gonna store those in variables and a, a, a way that you could do this, right? I think I've done this as like top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. Another thing that I've seen done is uh, north. So northeast is this, northwest, southwest, southeast. And so that's the sort of convenient way I can refer to these uh, tiles, these subsections, as northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. So just to be kind of uh, concise about the words, I'm going to use, I probably should type these all the way out actually. So let's do this, this.northwest, equals a new quad tree. So I need to make all of these subdivisions. South, uh, north, east, southwest, southeast. Okay, 
So this is going to work. So each one of these, I'm making a new quad tree for each one of these subsections. But they need to, when you make a quad tree, you need to give it a boundary. So what I need to do is say, I'm going to say, uh, let, north, let northwest equal a new rectangle that is, so northwest is up here, x plus width divided by 2, y minus height divided by 2, and then width divided by 2, height divided by 2. So I'm going to make a new rectangle that's at this dot x plus this dot w divided by 2, comma this dot y minus this dot h divided by 2, and then this dot w divided by 2, this dot h divided by 2. So that is the boundary for the northwest, <laughs> northwest quadrant. And then I'm going to pass that in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for northeast, for southwest, and southeast. So now, though, northeast would be x minus, and then southwest and southeast are plus, southwest is x plus, and southeast is x minus. So does this make sense, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus, and then minus, minus, plus, plus. So I think I've gotten all the quadrants here. So I've made rectangles out of all the quadrants and put them into variables. Now here's the thing. I don't always want to subdivide, right? I only want to subdivide if I haven't already subdivided this um, quadrant, this, this quad tree. So I could check, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called divided, which is false. And then I'm going to say if not, if not this dot divided, this dot subdivide, and then this dot divided equals true. Now what I need to do is, if I'm at capacity, I, remember I'm inserting a point. The whole thing that I'm doing here is inserting a point. I've made a pretty big error here. I, I've gone off the deep end writing way too much code before testing it. There is no, I, this refers to this particular quad tree. There's no this.x. What there is is this.boundary.x. Boy, this is going to make this super long-winded. Let's do this. I kind of feel silly doing this, but I think this is going to make our life much easier, just in terms of being able to read the code. So I'm going to make, this is totally unnecessary, but just to make the code more readable, let's make some local variables to this function that are kind of like aliases to this longer way. And then I'm going to start over again, and I'm going to say x plus w divided by 2 y minus w divided by 2, w divided by 2, h divided by 2, and this should be h. And now I'm going to put these all back here. North, east, south, west, south, east, and this is x plus, x minus, x plus, x minus, y minus, y minus, y plus, huh, y plus. Am I right, finally? West and East are swapped. No. Oh, no. Oh, God. Also, West and East are swapped. Boy, Northeast. I'm going to do it this way. Northeast, Northwest. Yeah, uh, Southeast, Southwest, right? Because <laughs> East, West. If this is the center, right? East to the West. North to the south. Okay, everybody, I think I've got it now. Oh boy. So now I'm gonna, now I need to pass in those boundaries. Northeast, no, ah, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. I have a really bad feeling that about 15 minutes of this video is me just trying to figure out north, south, east, west. The good thing is that part's done. I think we're good now. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this code. There still could be an error there, but I'll find it later if there is. So remember where we were. We were checking if it hasn't been divided, subdivide it, and now what's the whole point? Remember, the whole point of what I'm doing, I was just saying this before I found all those errors, or the chat found all those errors, that I'm trying to insert a point. So if I'm at capacity, now I just need to insert the point 
in my subsections. So I can actually say, remember, these subsections are all quad trees. So I can recursively call the insert function on those. So I can say this.northeast um, dot insert that point. So let me do it to each one of these. Northwest, southeast, southwest. So think about this. I'm going to get rid of some of this extra white space. The idea here is that, okay, if I have room, I'm going to take the point and I'm done. If I don't have room, then I need to check, do I have some children quad trees? If not, I'll, if I don't, I'll make them. And then I'll just say, add, I'll just sort of say, hey, pass the buck here. You take that point, all four of you. And all four of those will say, uh, do I have room? But here's the thing. I'm missing something kind of important here. Should I really be taking that point? Now, it kind of made sense at the beginning that I just said, well, do I have room? Take the point. But really, I should be checking, is this point something that's within my boundary? That's the whole point of this. Because now that I'm going to say, hey, all four of you, only one of those should really actually take the point, right? Those, so what I really need to do before I even insert the point at all is I need to say something like, if um, if uh, this dot boundary contains the point, and better yet, something like if this dot boundary does not contain the point, then just get out of here. Like I don't want to do anything if I don't. I'm ignore. I don't contain the point. Stop. Don't go any forward. I'm the wrong path. I'm the wrong section. Some other section is going to take care of it. This dot boundary dot contains. Well, that means. In my rectangle function, I need a contains function that returns true or false based on some point. So what I can say is I can say, hey, is, or I can actually just return point.x, and this is going to be really long, point.x if it's, it has to be within all of the bounds. So it's got to be greater than this.x minus this.w and and I can put these, I think, on different lines just to uh, point dot x is point dot x is less than this dot x plus this dot w. And point dot y is less than is greater than this dot y plus boy, this is a really exciting thing I'm programming. And point dot y is less than this dot y plus this dot h. Okay. Oh my goodness. Minus and plus. Right? Remember. Contain, contains, contains, this is a function that checks if this particular point is within the boundary. So is the point, is a particular point within the center minus the width and the center plus the width, the center minus the height and the center plus the height. And I'm going to stare at this code for a second to see if it's right. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good. So why not? Let's keep going here. So if it's not in here, go away. Otherwise, if I'm not at capacity, add the point. If I'm not divided, subdivide, and then just try to insert to all, my, uh, all these uh, children points. Now, I feel like I need insert to kind of like return true or false. But I guess, because at some point it's going to be done, I think this is actually pretty good. Okay, I had a nice suggestion from the chat, which that maybe it makes sense to, in the subdivide function, actually set this dot divided equal to true. Okay, so let's, let's think about this. Uh, how am I doing here? What is this going to do? Let's, let's actually try running the code. All right, so I have a boundary. Its capacity is four. It has a points array, and it got a point. That's good. That's great. Let's add four points. All right, look at this. I've got a boundary, I've got a capacity, divided is false, and I've got four points. Great. So now if I add five points, it's definitely going to have to subdivide. Let's see how that works. Let's add five, whoops, let's add five points now. I could have changed the capacity to the smaller. Oh, we've got a problem. So look at this. When I, um, 
when I, I set in the constructor this property n um, as the capacity, but when I make these new quad trees, I'm not passing that in. So I could like do something like this, but I think um, let's just, I made this a little extra complicated, but let's pass in also the capacity. So that capacity needs to uh, continue to be there. Now let's try with five points. All right, look at this. It's got four points. Where's that fifth point? Where's that fifth point? It's not in the northwest, east. It's not in the northwest. It's not in the southeast. It's in the southwest. Because, does this seem right? The point is 104, 354. That sounds like southwest. <laughs> yes, southwest. West it's this way, south it's this way. So I think this is working. I think we're kind of getting it subdivided correctly. Let's, um, let's try 50 points. No errors, I've got a quad tree with a capacity of four, it's got four points. Northeast has a capacity of four, it's divided, it's got four points, it's got a bunch of subsections, which have, which have this one just has one point, but maybe this one has no points. Um, so I think this is working, but here's the thing. Is this working? Uh, looking in the console is only going to get me so far. I think what would help me now to see if this is working really is to visualize it. So I'm going to break with what I said at the beginning, whoops, which is trying to uh, purely have this... I think what I want to do, I mean, I kind of want the quad tree thing to be independent of P5, but I'm going to give that up just for a second because I want to write a function called quad tree show. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to write, add a function called show. And what is this going to do? I'm going to say stroke 255, or let's say uh, stroke 255, no fill, and I'm going to draw a rectangle at this dot boundary dot x and this dot boundary dot y, and this dot w times two, I need to say times two because P5 expects the full width, this dot h times two. So I'm drawing the rectangle for the boundary, and um, then, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this for a second, and then, all oh, right, then if, then I want to recursively draw any of its children boundaries. So if this is divided, then I can say this dot north west dot show. So I want to recursively north east, south east, south west. Doesn't really matter what order, but just to be consistent. Northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. Let's take a look. Oh, rectangle is not defined. Quad tree dot js uh, <laughs> rect in P5. W is not defined. Line 73. Uh, oops, this should be two. Uh, and then let's see here. Um, background zero. Um, all right, what happened here? Thankfully, the chat is here <laughs> to tell me that this is this dot boundary, right? I'm always confusing and forgetting that the x, y with height properties are in the boundary object, not part of the quad tree object itself. So we can say this dot boundary dot h. So let's see what happens now. There we go. Ooh, everything looks like it's right but off kilter. And this is an easy one. I forgot to say rect mode center, because I want to draw the rectangles based on the center. There we go. This looks good. Now, let's actually draw the points. Uh, point, let's say, uh, four, four, let P of points, this dot points, and let's just say point, oh, P, uh, <laughs> sorry, point P dot X, P dot Y. So this isn't very many points, and it's very hard to see those. So let's say stroke weight 4, and um, uh, stroke weight 1 up here. Stroke weight 
one, and let's go to sketch.js, and let's make 500 points, and there we go. This kind of makes sense, right? You can see for whatever reason, there are not as many points here, so it didn't need to subdivide, but it did subdivide here. We never got anywhere to subdivide beyond just this size, right? Is there any, so what's kind of unfortunate about this is when I, because I'm calling things randomly, but because I'm setting the points randomly, the subdivisions are just like perfect, it's so evenly distribu distributed that the subdivisions aren't that interesting. Let's change this. I have an idea. Let's actually add, let's get rid of this. Whoops. Let's say, um, let's, add, uh, let's add the draw function. And I'm gonna say if, I could use mouse drag, but I'm gonna say if mouse is pressed, and I'm gonna say, um, because I have an idea here, I'm gonna, well first I wanna always draw it, and then I want to make a new point where the mouse is, and I wanna insert that point, um, and I need the, this to be a global variable now, the quad tree itself. I'm just gonna call it tree, because I don't like, QT is sort of a, I think it'll make it a little bit more, I could say call it Q tree, kind of like that. Q, okay, so bear with me for a second. What I'm doing here is I wanna insert points where I'm clicking the mouse. So with this uh, show of undefined, uh, oh, whoops, I, do not want to re-declare QTree with let. So we can see as I draw, it has to subdivide more where I am. That's kind of cool. Is it, what's, why does the frame rate seem so slow? So let me actually insert, uh, what I wanted to do was just insert a bunch of points. I think this will make it more interesting to look at. Like if I actually insert five random points whenever I'm clicking the mouse, and we can just set these uh, like a little bit randomly around one area. And let me run this again. Yeah, so you can see I'm just getting these like subdivisions. And so now we can sort of see that what I'm doing here and uh, is I'm getting a nice, it's subdividing more where it needs more subdivisions, if that makes sense. Now, I'm being asked a couple different questions from the chat. Number one is edge cases. And what do I mean by edge cases? What if the point is exactly on the edge of one of those sections? I didn't account for that. The truth of the matter is with these random numbers and floating points, eh, but this could really happen. So what I think that I need to do here is in the insert function, in the contains function, what I need to do probably is just consider um, whether it's less than or equal to. And I could do that on just two edges so that it would kind of, but you know, what if it's on the edge of the very edge? I don't know. What I could do is just kind of be inclusive. How do you write these? Like this? <laughs> um, and this should take care of that because I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say, if you're on my edge, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you. Don't worry. And, and, and I probably could get not, but, I'm not concerned too much about the accuracy of this. And you can see, so same, same thing. Um, and interesting, it's really subdividing a lot in these areas. I, I could, um, so here we go. So this is, kind of, this is kind of an interesting visual result. Like I almost want to um, go back to not drawing the points now. Like let me take out the points. Because now I'm able to draw, I'm kind of like with my mouse, I'm drawing this kind of interesting recursive tree pattern. It doesn't seem like a tree, but it's all, if I were to unpack the way it's stored, it's all this nested tree of rectangle objects. Okay, so what have I really done here? I have made the quad tree, but I'm missing kind of a really important point because what I want to use the quad tree for is to query it. I want to say, hey, this area, could you please give me all the particles back that are in that area? And I think what I'm gonna do is make that part two of this coding challenge because this first part of the coding challenge is, um, is, I can, is, is finished. <laughs> um, I've made the quad tree data structure and I'm storing the points in it. Ah, there was, I do wanna address one question. Is, 
Oh yeah, this will add, uh, yes, oh, okay. So hold on, I realized that. So the thing is, it is, it is gonna add it to more than one of these, which is a problem. So before I leave, it was rightfully pointed out to me that the way I just did that with the equals is that it would actually go into, if it was exactly on the edge between like east and west, it would end up in both of these quad trees, which is a bit of a problem. So um, there's a couple ways I could address that. Again though, what I think what I want to do here is I want this function, the insert function, to return true or false whether it succeeded in, in, in inserting the point. So it should return false if it's not contained, and it should return true. It should return true if it is actually inserted into the points array, and then I can just say if I can wrap each one of these, I can actually just return the result of each one of these, right? So that way, oh, no, 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 I can't do this. Because I don't want to, uh, I really have to say, if it insert, only if it's true, return true. Oh, this is a little awkward, but this is fine. Well, you, know, you know me, I like to refactor later. So what this is going to do is it's just going, I could use an else at least, I guess. Right, because I, I, um, so what I want to do is I want to find, it's going to, you know, I want to find where it's been, where it's got inserted, and then I want to return true. Okay, so all this extra stuff I'm adding here. Um, maybe this is silly and I should have just used, <laughs> thought of the boundaries more carefully, but this is going to guarantee that it's only ever inserted into one. And it is giving slight preferential treatment to northeast because it was on the boundary, it's always going to go into northeast as opposed to it'll never get to northwest, but that's okay, I think. Um, so let's just see if this is still working. It is somehow like imagining it's working faster, but I don't think it actually is. Um, wonderful, okay, am I really at the end now? Um, ah, there's a nice little, uh, there's, yeah, there's, people are giving me all sorts of suggestions about how to improve this code. I could use like an or. And so I encourage you to make a much nicer version of this in your own code. I'm going to leave it like this because it's really explicit about the algorithm. I, I, I do want to write some comments in here. So I'm going to finish with this first part one of quad tree. I've made a quad tree in like only four and a half hours it took me. Um, and I'm going to do a part two. And in part two, what I'm going to do is ask for a selection of points um, uh, within a certain boundary. And then I can apply that to a collision detection out, uh, uh, problem and, and make that collision detection problem much, much faster, okay? So thanks for watching this part one and watch part two if you like. It'll be next and you can find a link to it in this video's description.